You may be seated, hallelujah. Today I want to talk to you. I want you to take notes. I would like you to take notes. To, today's word is uh, the prayer that prevails. Amen. How many of you are tired of praying prayers that don't get anywhere? Prayer is like a boxing match. Prayer is like a boxing match. In a boxing match, when you want to hit, you aim. If you want to hit the nose, you'll hit what? The nose. If you want to hit the ear, you'll hit what? The ear. If you want to hit the mouth, you hit the mouth. But there are prayers that Vanabam Dimu are praying them. They are aimless. They are, they are not hitting anywhere. You know, you just know that there are... Hey, really, you must edit this and remove this. They, you know, if, when you're in a boxing ring, when you are fighting blindfolded, how do you fight? You don't know what you are hitting. Eh? You just throw punches. You don't even know what the person is. Sometimes you hit the referee and be glad that I've hit my opponent, whereas you have hit somebody who is a referee. So, even in prayer, is the same thing. In prayer, you must know why you are praying, where you are praying, and when you are praying, and what is the aim of your prayer. Most, mostly, many people pray aimless prayers. We pray for the sake of. We pray for the sake of, you know what? Let me just pray. Oh, I'm going to work. I forgot to pray. You, re, you run back to the house. Father, I thank you for protecting me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Gone. Instant prayer. Gone. And then, when you're in the car, yo, I forgot to pray for my children. Father, protect my children also, especially Kathy, especially, especially Morendeni, especially Morabin. You know, protect them. And then, amen. You, there is no commitment in that prayer. And the likelihood is that you are not praying. You don't like what I've just said. <laughs> that, that's the likelihood. Amen. So, can we can we, can we go to the practical way? But before we go to the practical word of prayer, I want to first give you reasons why we should pray. Because most of us, the reason why we pray amiss, we don't know what we are fighting against. Because we don't have self-spiritual diagnosis. You don't know what is it you must deal with spiritually because you can't identify the areas of your battles. So, failure to identify the areas of your battle will be failure to pray what? An effective prayer. I always say this. If I say we've got a lot of mosquitoes in the house, precious, I don't come with an AK-47. Try, trying to kill mosquitoes. It's not going to work. I might eat one or zero, but the mosquitoes will hide because of the noise. But after the noise, they will come back and do their work. I always say that, that if you want to kill a lion, I will make a doom. The lion will just sneeze and thank God for the meal, meaning you. <laughs> and do its work. Amen. So, many people are dealing with what I call, they, remember, a Christian cannot be demon-possessed, can be demon-oppressed. That one you have to know. Demonic possession takes place in the spirit of a man. Let us talk about the madman of Gadara. The man was so strong. The Bible says, 
the way he was possessed with the legions of demons, even when they bind him with chains, the chains will do what? He will do what? Break them. He was too strong. Everybody was afraid to go. So the, so the, so the way he was strengthened internally by the demonic spirit, his, his strength manifested what? Outward. So meaning the spirit man was strengthened by demonic So So can we look at the madman of Gadara differently? Imagine if it is you possessed by the power of the Holy Spirit like that. Such that when the demonic chains came, you just break them off like that. What will happen to you? you you'll be living what? The most successful life. Hallelujah. So, so a child of God, you can only be demonic, demonic what oppressed. Because once you say, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and you are born again, your spirit man belongs to Jesus Christ. You are his, and he is in you, and you are in him. However, when your soul and your body, that's what the, that's what the Bible says, renew what? Your mind. When your soul and your body are not properly what? in tune with, with the word of God, those two areas can be demonic what? Oppressed and prevent the spirit man from manifesting the full power and the anointing of God. Are we together? Say I cannot be demonic possessed. Amen. So now, let us see, let us look at the at the signs of demonic oppression. I want you to, I want you to write down. What, okay, what, does, what, does, what does it mean to oppress? I think we need to first uh, look at that. What does it mean to oppress? To oppress, to be oppressed, to be what? To be weighed down. Amen? You cannot do what? Raise up. It's to be what? Weighed down. To be suppressed. Why are you being suppressed? So that you can fail to execute your rights. For example, the, the apartheid years, there was a systemic way of oppressing black people. There was no change. The system was created in a way that black people do not do what prosper. And why, and why is it so difficult to resist oppression is because you don't feel any physical chain. You, you, you don't feel anything that is like, it's like it becomes your new normal. You know, the first slavery was easy to resist because a slave will see them with what? With chains bound and with their legs. And they said, no, no, no. I'm human also. You cannot buy inside that. I cannot even drink water by myself. And now they say, no, okay, it's fine. You are free, but the system will, do, will continue with the work. Are we together? So even in the spiritual realm, there are those who have been freed by salvation. You are free but the demonic systems want to continue doing what? The work of what? Of oppressing you. There is a, so once you've, you, have, you are unable to identify what is this that is oppressing you, you will pray amiss. Because you don't know what is it that you are fighting against. You know, like for, for example, okay, I won't, I won't say this because Gatli is doing his work. And also to be oppressed means to be under a very hard yoke, right yoke. Remember, our topic for today is prayer that what? Prevails. To be oppressed is to be what? Under a very hard yoke. Jesus Christ says, come unto me all whose yokes are hard and your, and your burdens are heavy. I will give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is what? It's light. Jesus Christ is saying, 
even if you are free from oppression, there is a price to pray for your freedom. There is a price to pay for your freedom. What is that price? Fasting, praying, not sleeping, not sleeping while others are sleeping, coming to church while others are saying we are watching the bold and the bloody fool. You know, the, the, there is always a price to what to pray. That's why Jesus Christ is saying, Come to me, my yoke is what is easy. Which means that there is another yoke. That yoke will prevent you from what? Prospering, living a peaceful life. Do not write those ones down because I'm still going to go to them. Living a peaceful life, not having increase. You know, you, you look at your life like since we were there, when you've been working in reverse, and when others are running forward, when they're running the opposite direction. When I'm saying that, remember the Olympics were the first African to swim in the water. <laughs> yeah, you know, when others were swimming going forward, he was on the same place, making so much noise with the water, but there was no movement. He forgot to win. That's, that's some prayers. And the second one to go to the Olympics, he, ran, he was swimming the opposite direction. So that's failure to identify what is oppressing you. Hallelujah. One thing that you have to know that oppression, oppression is meant to one, write it down, oppression is meant to one to steal your fellowship with God. Demonic oppression is meant to do what? To steal your fellowship with who? With God. What do you fellowship with? Matata. <laughs> and then English people have got a good word for fellowshipping with the problems. They call it stressing. So spiritually, really, when you're having a fellowship with your issues, you know them when you wake up, your issues are waiting. By the way, I don't have petrol. Yeah, I wonder if I will go to work. When some people, when some people see your number, I wonder if I will call. Hello. You are fellowshipping with what? With your issues. Number two, oppression prevents you from having a fellowship with the weight. Remember number one, you are fellowshipping with what? With God. Oppression prevents you from having a fellowship with what? With God. Number two, oppression prevents you from having a fellowship with what? With the weight. Amen? Number three, oppression prevents you from doing the most important task of a Christian. Pray. An oppressed spirit does not pray. Not that you are not born again. Satan knows that the moment you start praying, all hell will break loose. He knows that that one, because he knows that what you carry in your spirit, man, the moment it comes out, he's in trouble and his demons. He knows that. So his best weapon is to oppress. Because he knows that inside your spirit man, there is what he call the sword of the spirit. Once that sword of the spirit is released, which is the word of God, wow, he knows that that one is free. Their children are free. Their generations after them are free. There is nothing that we can do. So what do we do? Like the woman with the issue of the blood. She was so oppressed by the issue of the blood such that her, her body affected her finances. The Bible said she sold everything that she had in order to get what? To get help. So, number one form of oppression, write it down. Number one form, I, I, I just gave you an example, bodily oppression. You just find that there is some, something is not right with your body. Since you were born, you don't know the meaning of the word healthy. 
and your, your, your life is centered around medication, doctors, hospital, clinics, ambulance, that, that is what a demonic oppression. So when, when Satan attacks your body, I know, I know of someone every month end there is a sickness. She didn't have a medical aid. Every month that there is a sickness, she has to go to the doctor and spend plus minus 600 consultation and around 400 on, on, on what? Med, on, on medicine. And when such things happen, the demonic oppression, bodily oppression, when it's prolonged, it becomes what? A lifestyle. The Bible said there is a woman who was bent for 38 years. She, she was what? A hunchback. She was, she was used to walk like this. When Jesus Christ said to her, he said, ought not this daughter of Abraham be free from what? From this. And he healed her and she was able to straighten up. Can I tell you something? Because of the demonic, bodily demonic oppression, she has never ever ima imagined herself walking up straight. Meaning when she was a baby, she dreamed of walking up straight. And as time goes by, she gave up on her dream and she found ways of coping while bent. How many people are living that life? You are a Christian. You are demonic oppressed. And the issue that you must find ways of what? Of coping with your, with your current situation. So that, 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 that is another reason to pray. Remember we are talking about prayer that what? That prevails. That another reason why? To pray. Number two, we, we, we spoke about uh, bodily, bodily uh, oppression. And they're going to talk about physical, but what is the difference between physical and bodily? Physical oppression, your limb. There is this leg that will never function properly. You know that as long as you live, you know there is this hand that, or this head that, that, that it will never be, it, it is never the same. Or there is this eye that will never see properly. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. So, when you identify this, that's bodily. You see, Jesus dealt with both bodily and physical oppression. The Bible said he healed. Okay, let us go to Matthew 15, 13. Let's go to Matthew 15, 30. I want to see you. I want you to see something. Because if I don't describe them through the scripture, they might not make sense to your spirit man. So I want your spirit man to catch this. Today we're going to just prolong it a bit because I want this introduction to sink. So that when we start dealing with prayers that prevail, you know what you are dealing with. Amen. Hallelujah. As I, as I said to you, I want you to learn the word that will be practical to your lives. Amen? You should instantly be able to identify that <clears throat> something is not right here. I'm praying about this. I'm dealing with this now. Amen? Did you get this? Did you get the scripture? Matthew 15, 30? 15, 3, 0, not 13. I know, Randy, that my English is too strong. My British accent. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Matthew 15, 30. It says, And they came unto him great multitude, having with them lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and they cast them down at his feet. And Jesus, what? Healed them all. What, 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 what were they suffering so from? What were they suffering from? Bodily and physical what? Oppressions. Remember, these ones, they were what? They were, it was only physical infirmities. Bodily and physical what? Infirmities. 
And this is one of the things that Jesus Christ dealt with the first time. Hallelujah. The, second, the third one, <laughs> mental oppression. Many people can't think straight. If you ever find yourself, you say to yourself, I'm going to make tea. The next thing you come back from the kitchen with oros. And you are so comfortable with it. At least I'm drinking something. That is a dangerous thing for a person to have. That is a, a kind of mental oppression that the enemy wants to subject people under. The inability to make decisions and stick to them. I was talking to someone. I said, w w where is brother who? who? He said, no, I chased him out of my company. I said, why? You know he suffered. He said, you know, that man, Fundi said, no, that man, you cannot work with him. I said, what happened? He said, a client will, for, will call now and give him the order. The next two minutes, he forgot totally. And two hours later, clients will be coming and say, but I've called and you took down my order. He said, huh? Yeah. You called, yes. Sorry. And then it continued and continued and continued until you lost his job. That is what a mental oppression. So the person can, can, can't think straight. Uh, Matthew, you know, Acts 10.38, can you, can you look at Acts 10.38? And people like that who are mentally oppressed, right, go to Acts 10.38, go to Acts 10.38. People like that who are mentally oppressed, they lose the ability to apply their minds. Remember what Isaiah 11, 2 to 3 says. We'll go to that one also. The spirit of what? Wisdom, counsel, and what? Understanding. The spirit of what? Wisdom, what? And what? So, wisdom, counsel, and understanding, they are what? They are the children, they are the food of the children of what? Of God. Hallelujah. Even, even Jesus Christ, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, healing all those who were what? Who were what? Check, who were what? Oppressed by what? Who were oppressed by the what? By the devil. Meaning, there is a healing from what? Oppression. Let us go to Isaiah 11, verse 2 to 3. Are we, are we going somewhere? Are we learning something tonight? That's why I love the, 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 the first day services. They are for soldiers. Okay. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of what? Wisdom. The, and what? The spirit of what? And what? The spirit of what? And what? So, a person who is mentally attacked cannot have, doesn't have, that not have what? First, wisdom. Number two, understanding. All those categories are what? They, they don't apply to him. Why? Because the mentality is under what? Demonic oppression. That person, you sit, you sit down with them now. Listen here, my child. What you have, God has blessed you with. Don't use it to fight against God. The, because of the lack of understanding the council won't rest. 
to that person. And such people, because they don't know what they are suffering from, they, they will spiritualize everything. The reason why I don't go to church, the reason why I don't, I don't want to go to work, you know, I'm not meant to work. God has something better for me. I know what I'm talking about. The person who, who speaks that language from the age of 25, the person is 45, still, still the same, same, same thing with no results. So that person is what? Mentally what? Oppressed. They are sane. They are not mad. They don't need any institution. They need what? Deliverance. Hallelujah. The other oppression is marital oppression. What marital oppression when the enemy steals the joy from the marriage. You know that you are married, but the reasons why you are married do not exist anymore. The blessings of the world make us one rich and brings what? No sorrow. The marriage is a blessing from who? From God. So in, when, married, when, when, when things like this happen in marital oppression, instead of people fighting the enemy who is stealing the peace, what do they do? They fight what? Each other. We don't see a demonic attack. We see a mad spouse or a crazy wife. You know, my friends, if my wife can start singing, I won't sleep in that house. No, she's not singing. You're not helping her. Go pray. Bind the spirit. Deal with the spirit behind. So God, this is not the wife that you gave me. I refuse to live like this. If it's not working... Call for the elders. Higher anointing. Who, who, who got a higher grace than yours? Come, let them pray with you. Pray with you and bind the spirit. That is what? Stealing the joy from, 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 from your marriage. Remember, the first form of attack of human beings came through marriage. Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. What, what was the institution that, that, that was attacked first to bring the sin into the world? Marriage. So when marriage is attacked, it brings chaos away into the community. I'm going to give you a perfect example of bullies in the schools. Bullies in the schools are unhappy at home. They are bottling something that must be released to someone. And they, they look for victims. Why? Because mommy and daddy at home are showing them how it is done better. When marriage is oppressed, the society becomes what? A mess. I'm giving you reasons to pray. Hallelujah. Number six. I know that I'm fast. Financial oppression. <laughs> yeah. That one, if you want to know, in Judges 6. Go to Judges 6. In Judges 6, he said, every time when the children of Israel sowed, and when it's time for harvest, the Philistine, the Amorites, and all these other nations will come, especially for what? For harvest. The Bible says, after destroying their, their vineyards, they are, they are fields. What, do, what are they going to do? They will throw stones in their fields and stones and rocks in their wells. Meaning, your chances of prospering again are what? Are limited. Before you sow again, you need to deal with what? With the stones and the rocks in the wells. And that brings forth what? Financial what? Oppression. And when financial oppression comes, it doesn't come as financial oppression. It comes as an important need not to have a covenant with God through giving, offering, taking care of the poor and the widows and tithing. 
And when those things are omitted, the devil knows that huh, when I got the rights in your finances because there is no covenant there. Come man then, the car, the car is broken. While you are still dealing with the car, broken car, when you are driving, your will, your will overtake you. Your real will overtake you. See that, oh, okay, that looks like my will forward there. While you're still worried, worried, worried about the car, you are missing an important presentation at work. And they say, ah, that one is not fit for promotion. So, after the harvest is stolen, when the rocks are thrown inside, these are the circumstances that, that works around the person who is financially oppressed. And what happens when a person is financially oppressed? When they get home, the children and the husband or the wife, they are all in trouble. Why? Why? Because they know, he know, he or she knows that the finances cannot meet what? The obligations. Yeah, you start blaming. Yeah, it's because of the school fees. It's because of my wife love, my wife love expensive things. It's because my husband is always buying suits in, 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 instead of doing this and this. And there's nothing with that. The, the biggest enemy is that you are financially oppressed and you are not even aware of that. And guess what? You will never pray against the spirit of financial oppression. You will never act against the spirit of financial oppression. You will deal with people around you and that's exactly what the enemy wants you. Remember we're talking about the prayers that what? Prevails. Hallelujah. We are where? Number six. Financial what? Financial what? John 10, 10 says, Jesus came so that what? You can have white life and life what? Abundant. What is abundant life? Can I tell you an example of abundant life? When your children are crying that it's only eggs. Where is cheese and bologna? Good, uh, good life problems. Nice life problems, yes. No, Kupela 4x4. We are having a 4x4. Napel, I'm going to society. Mokiang is a farm, so I'll need 4x4. But I'm, go I'm going with my friends. Kai -kai. When, I, when I just, just use a convertible, you'll pack it outside, and then you'll go with your friends and their But No, no, but a 4x4. Nice life issues to those on the financially oppressed. But when you are financially oppressed, you, you don't know that you are dealing with a demonic spirit. Why? Because the moment the covenant is cut off, when you, are fi when you find financially you don't have a covenant with God, the moment that covenant is gone, Satan becomes the Lord of your finances. And, and guess what he, what he does? He finances whomever he wants in his kingdom using your money. There can be a mechanic next to you who believes in an inyanga. He goes to the inyanga. I want to tell you real life issues. He goes to an inyanga. My business is low. The inyanga says, no, I'm going to give you a muti. And he gives the muti those demonic spirits will attack the cars that are not under the covenant around him so that they can be brought away to the mechanic. Are we together? You look surprised. You, you're surprised, ne? but it's true. Ne? So I want to tell you that the moment, and then now because you're, you're financially not in covenant with God, what do you do? You go and finance the one that Satan is empowering. So 
So I'm trying to get you to sit there around your car. Yeah, yeah, this is a big problem. I would not tell you, Papa. No, it's a little bit more. I say strip. I had a story. My friend, my pastor friend Michael David. You see, I want you how when the covenant works, this car was misbehaving. He went to another person, they quoted him around 14,000 to fix the car. And I said, no, no, Murut, let's pray about this. God must give us the solution. We pray. As we pray, the next morning he woke up, he, he went to YouTube. Holy Spirit guided him to YouTube. He, he looked, he asked the what, 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 what causes this problem? It was only a brake switch that was affecting the, the, the system of automatic gearbox. A brake switch. They are, in the OD, they are, they, are, they, are, they are linked. And the other one, they are, they are, the false diagnosis from, uh, from another person, from another religion that has a moon on them was saying that yeah, it's going to be between fourteen and 26000 And he went there, he paid less than 3000 to fix to, 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 to fix the issue. So God saved him how much? Uh, yeah, so when it's, uh, I'm, dwelling, I'm dwelling on this, on financial oppression, because I want you eyes to be open on how the enemy operates. Because if he's not exposed in that area, you won't know how to pray better. Remember, we're dealing with prayers that what? That prevails. Amen? So for the prayer to prevail, we must have first what? A right diagnosis. Hallelujah. Are we together? So then it happened like that. And then he went there. He said, Muruti, can you believe it? I said, no. He said, Mutola uh, Nathanya. Nabatoja can. The car is sorted. Because it has an issue when it goes beyond and it will reduce the speed because it feels like it's still in parking. Because the, the brake switch told the, the gearbox that the brakes are on. So the brake switch, the gearbox surprise why the car is moving when the brake what is on. Because as automatic, it's bound to do what? To reduce the speed. Are we together? So the enemy failed to make money out of the child of God. Say from this day onwards, the enemy will fail to make money out of me. Say my finances are covenanted with God through giving, taking care of the poor, the widows, the orphans, and tithing. Do that. You'll move from what financial oppression. Hallelujah. Can we move forward? Career oppression. <laughs> Career oppression will go back to the, spirit, to the spirit of wisdom. Daniel became the wisest of all men in Babylon. He was so wise such that King Nebuchadnezzar gave him the responsibility to do what? To manage all other premiers. His career advanced so much because of the spirit of wisdom and understanding and might and counsel from God such that the others started plotting against him. And how did they plot? They raised a golden image. You know that. They said, whosoever does not pray to that image shall be cast into the lake of fire. But many people don't know that the jealousy came out of the success of Daniel in his career. He was an excellent administrator in the whole province. He knew what, in, in, in the whole of Babylon, he knew what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Because why? The spirit of the Lord was upon him. He had a confidence with God. The God who never fails didn't allow Daniel to fail. No, you, 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 you don't understand. The God who never fails says Daniel won't do what? 
won't fail. So, because of the covenant and the maintenance of covenant. So, it is, it is not just the covenant. For example, I cannot say my wife, I'm married to you. I'll see you January or June next year. If I don't make it, I'm guaranteeing Christmas. I promise kids. That marriage does not exist because there is no what? Maintenance. We are not together. So many are saved but not maintaining their relationship with God. And it's affecting every other aspect of our lives. When other people go to their inyangas, when they see that mm, I want to go up, they go to their inyang. The inyanga says to them, every day, Six o'clock, be in the office. And you start where? Go to toilet. After go to toilet, you say, what is happening three times? I don't know why I'm making up this. <laughs> and, and spit it inside the toilet. And after that, something was fatal. Out of one away. That person will religiously do that. And I'm, t- I'm saying this, Mr. Tuesday, because there are people. That I know we're doing that before COVID. They will be the first one to come in the office. They will go to the bathroom. And when they come out of there, they don't smell so nice. Look at what Sassi said, verse 7 and 12. They are maintaining their, their covenant and their fellowship. What do you want to do I fast today or not? fast. No, I'm not fasting. But then I prepared jungle oats for me. I thought we were fasting. Ah, daddy, they do they do that little melon fanaka. Did they about fasting? Let those who go do their faith. No. When God speaks, listen and do. And when you do, every oppressive spirit that comes against you. You will deal with it. Because why? Because in your career, you are dealing with jealous people around you. When they know that you are excellent, I said that we want us to preach the word that is practical, that is applicable. They are going to do something against you. You'll be surprised why you and your manager don't see it eye to eye anymore. When the manager looks at, at Mr. Dagadar, all of a sudden that, when I man, when I'm born, your work, show me where the issue is. There's something not just right with your work. Pinpoint, hey, your work is not right, go and do something. If there is a spirit behind. But when the covenant is maintained, you'll be like Daniel. They will throw you in the lake of fire. The fourth man will appear. And say, this, the spirit of excellence in Daniel is not that it's Christ himself. So your career oppression, the career oppression won't manifest. So identify these things. Hallelujah. Are we together? Hallelujah. In the last days, Joel chapter 2, verse 26. Joel chapter 2, verse 26. What's the time? Why are you going to go in the Greece and tell us? No, this is not fair. No, 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 no. no. This word is nice. We, 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 we can't be stopped by time. Joel chapter 2, verse 26. No, 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 not that. Verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I want to talk about dream oppression. Many people are oppressed through dreams. 
The Bible said old men shall dream dreams and young men shall see visions. They are all different types of dreams. Others are visions. But when your dreams don't represent God, every time when Ukaru, we are being chased by a lion, Ukaru take his heart out. When every time when the lion sees you, it's like a romet. It wants to eat you. Every time when you are dreaming, nothing's not right. You are under the spirit of what? Demonic oppression in your dreams. It becomes what? A prayer point. Why is it important for dreams? Many breakthroughs in the Bible came through dreams, including the protection of Jesus Christ. And the angel came to Joseph in dreams and said, Take your son and your wife, flee to Egypt, for, for Herod seeks to do what? To kill him. And the God spoke to Solomon through dreams that says that you did not ask for the life of your enemies. I will give you more. So breakthroughs came through what? Through dreams. So if your dream world is not under your control, something is being stolen from you. That one you have to know. Refuse to have demonic influence dreams. If I have them, if they attack me, said, because certain take chances. Eh? The Bible said, after he, 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 he tried Jesus Christ, he tested Jesus Christ, he left him until what? The opportune time. Meaning he was going to do what? Still do what? Come back. So he takes chances. When that happens to me, I wake up. I don't waste time. And release the blood of Jesus Christ. And take Holy Communion. And declare Proverbs 631 that whatever that the enemy has stolen from my life through dreams, I claim they got sevenfold. Because don't just say, you know what? You know what? Hey, I didn't have a nice dream. What if? I want to remain now. Hey, yeah, what's the king? Hey, what's the what, 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 You see things that we dream. And then you just let it go like that. No, we don't do that. You don't do that. Do something about it. I'm giving you reasons to pray, right? Is prayer that what? I can't hear you. Prayers that do what? Prevails. Hmm. Every Joseph got his breakthrough through what? Through what? Through dreams. Daddy, I had a dream. All others were bowing before my what? Mistake or is this this mistake of hey, ne? So the, his father said, "It means that your brother shall bow before you." And then his dreams came to pass when they were bowing before him away in Egypt. So the area of your dreams must be monitored, managed, and be prayed for. So I'm telling you, I've given you how many things, how many types of demonic oppressions, and you tell me why a Christian doesn't pray. I'm not yet done. I'm still going to go down the list. Get, uh, I've given you how many reasons to pray now? A lot. And other things that we take for granted around us. Our children. That being oppressed, me mental oppression with books. That one must address. A wise child from, from grade zero to grade seven, a child is distinction. All of a sudden, grade eight. I, I hate school. In fact, I want to be a DJ. No, no, no I don't want to be a DJ. I want to be a dancer. No, I don't want to be a dancer. I want to, I want to sing. No, I don't want to sing. I, 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 want, I, 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 I want to be an artist. Not that there is anything wrong with all those careers. No. What I want to address is the current state of mind of the child. 
wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, cancer, understanding is being oppressed in the child. When things are like that, you don't sit down the child and say, my child needs counseling. Deal with the spirit, spirit behind. Pray and cast it out. Even if you, have to, if you have to fast for 21 days every month until the child is free, do that. Because it's the destiny and the future that is at stake. And once that is not properly dealt with, that child will be a problem to you later. Hello, ma. Hello. Gubela chile di aburoto. Mali 46. Puli gubela chile di aburoto. Pela lina sinze gola mundenda la sonru meli silo. This is not fair. I know that you hate me. You hate me so much. You didn't deal with the spirit while he's still young. You say, King Wan, not our right. No. How many of you were here last year when I prayed for the exams? I said, Children must bring their books. One of the testimonies that I got was that one of the children that we prayed for for the first time got distinction on meds. Here in the church. They said, Daddy, and we knew that this person was good at meds, but it was just not happening. So we dealt with what? With the books. The child was set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So everything needs what? Say every facet of my life needs God. Even when you are cooking, it needs God. I'm telling you, don't subtract God like this is my area. Because that area that you have subtracted, God will be the entry of the enemy. Are we together? Number nine, number ten, verbal oppression. <laughs> you know, there are some people who are overtaken by their tongue before they think. They've got this gift and anointing of always saying the wrong things at the wrong time, <laughs> at the wrong people, at the wrong place. You know, Korea, how tabaying you make sure that uva ruma waya waya. How could I feel love as yaspa? How do love as fell ya pick and pain? How could I not love as yakai kai? How could I feel a mufa bag at the tatokolo? You know what's going to come out of the mouth. And, and those people, they are not doing that by themselves. It's a verbal oppression. It is when the spirit of rejection is at work. They don't know when to say, how to say. Luke 12, 12. Let, 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 let us go to Luke 12, 12. I want to show you something. That it matters what, what you say. When to say it and how to say it. And a child of God does not pray. What does Luke 12, 12 says? Luke 12, verse 12, Mr. D. The Holy Spirit will do what? What to do what? What you ought to say in when? In that very hour. Meaning, every hour, there is something that the Holy Spirit wants you to say. Amen? You don't just... Every hour, here it was the, the disciples, they were going before the, the council. And they were worried. The no, Holy Spirit said, no, don't worry. Don't, don't worry. When you get there, the Holy Spirit will teach you what to say in that very hour. There are certain things that only your tongue can get you out of trouble. Or certain areas, only your tongue can get you out or can get you those things. Many of us have destroyed our future through our tongues. 
I share when I me. I'm not. You know what? CEO na. Uzalakan na we noati. Me CEO. I mean, utwela wo precious. Wo lungi. Those are CEO material. You just come to me or not CEO. Nam feli fiyo lo geta wants. Kato kinilan tuwey kuri wasi. Kuri. The enemy knows that the life and death lies where? In the power of your what? Of your tongue. The, the tongue is so small, but it can cause what? Fire. The Bible says the tongue is also small, small but it's, the, it's like what? The rudder of the sheep. The sheep, no matter how big it is, the direction of the sheep is controlled by a small thing. So, so is your tongue. When your tongue is oppressed, you will say everything that the enemy wants, to see, wants you to say so that he can take you where he wants you to go. And you tell me that you don't have a reason to pray. Yo, Nadia, I forgot all that. Yo, yo, I'm suffering. Let the weak say what? Let the poor say what? We speak those things that be not as Romans 4.17. We speak, can you, can, can you go to Romans 4.17? We speak those things that are not as though what? They are. Mark 11.23b, you shall have what? Whatever what? You say. So when the tongue is oppressed, when you are not aware of what you see, you know, I became so sensitive of what people say around me. I will correct you on the spot. Somebody once say, you know what, Vanaba, he, he was a carry, but over, but Gina, that other brigade. Uh, it's either you are reversing your words or you are going. You know that I can't reverse them. I can't tell your words anyway, but you reverse them. And I can't reverse them. Maragiriki, I joke. I can't know. Words don't have a joke. There is no joke in the spiritual realm. One thing that you have to know, there is no what joke. That's why the Bible said, now be careful of those what blabbers. Those who, blah, 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 blah. there's no joke in the spiritual realm. I said, reverse your word or go. And if you go, you're not coming back. And he never came back, even to this day. And I don't care. Nobody will come and release words upon my children's lives that are not okay. And I just let them be. And that one I won't compromise. You are where you are in your life because of the words that were released by either yourself or someone. And ignorantly so, they are prophesying upon your life. Won't you know how about strong? Yeah? I refuse. Greater things are waiting for you, my child. For greater is he who is in you than the one who is in the world. You are blessed coming in and blessed going out. No matter how angry you can be as a parent, don't release a curse upon your children. Your words are very strong. I remember a man he was surprised when, why things are not going well in his life. He prayed and he prayed and he prayed until the Holy Spirit said to him, sit down, keep quiet. That is not going to change anything. Take a pen and a paper. He sat down. Write down everything that you were ever told as a child. You will never amount to anything. You are useless. You are useless just like your mother or your father. Your whole family is like you. Look at you. Movie. All those things. 
He said, I wrote them down. After, I, after writing them down, the Holy Spirit said, read them aloud. He read them. I said, cancel them one by one. He went to them. He reversed them one by one, one by one, one by one. And his tongue was set free. He was able to say positive things about himself. For death and life lies where? In the power of your tongue. Hallelujah. Mm. I've got 10 more to go. I think I'll stop here. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Those who are in the rush will say amen. <laughs> but let me say this one. Emotional oppression. That's why the Bible speaks about the renewal of the mind so much more than anything else. Be careful what you think. Romans 12, 2, I love, I, I love the scripture, what you, how you think. There are people who sit down alone by themselves. They will have a party. They will be laughing so much. The next second, they are so sad and crying hysterically. And the next moment, they are suicidal. And the, and, and, and the next thing, they don't want to talk to anyone. They are shut down. It's emotional oppression. And when, when the enemy does that, just know that he is afraid of your good state of mind. He knows that once this one is normal, my kingdom is destroyed. Amen? So, I want you to look at all these reasons. Remember, we, we, we are dealing with the issue of prayer. Well, I'm going to do prayer because next week we'll be fasting, by the way. Now that I told you the reasons to pray, you, you, we will be fasting. I want us to have reasons to fast. We will be coming to church to pray. We, we are going to choose... This day we are praying for this. This day we are praying for this. For five days, we'll be coming to church to pray. Why do we need to pray? Let us be practical in our application of the word. If you want to see breakthrough, let us make breakthrough real by what? Being in the word. For example, we don't... I, 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 I thought, let, let there be Lord Shedding. The Western Army and family you passed the test, by the way. Let there be Lord Shedding. People won't come to church. Uh, there was no clothes to wear. Lord said, you continue your command day. Ha. The an office. But why bridge in command day? Sound like you. Ah, the Lord said, you when. How about church on Sunday? Why didn't you do the same? We are not in the good emotional state of mind to put God first. And that, in everything that you do, but seek you what? First, the kingdom of God. So now we put back where? The kingdom of God. And having said that, just want to tell you that we got a lot of reasons to pray. Prayers, prayers that prevail. And in, I'm still going to teach you the prayers to pray when and how. What are the spiritual weapons to pray? For example, dealing with the strong man. Who is the strong man? Many people are not succeeding in their families because there is a family strong man who have been given a permission and a directive by your ancestors then. These are yours. When I'm close to If they don't save you, make sure that they save you. And when you don't save their demonic spirits, what happens? In every kingdom, there are, there are enforcers. In the kingdom of God, the angels of God are what? Enforcers. They enforce. In the kingdom of darkness, the demonic spirits are enforcers. So those, they, and they are enforcers and what? And punishers. But there are those who are, the demonic spirits whose responsibility is to punish those who don't obey. And we, we, we don't know what you're dealing with. You go after this prophet, after this prophet, after this prophet. Only to find that you need to say, you know what, you strong man of my family, I don't belong to you. The Lord Jesus Christ rebukes you. You set me free. 
One pastor prayed that prayer. He said, for the first time, I'm getting promotions in my workplace. For the first time, all of a sudden, my wife loves me. Amen? Are we together? In your uh, amazement, please stand up because you look so amazed. <laughs> please stand up. I want us to pray. We'll continue next week, Thursday. One, I want to, I, I want to tell you something. Don't look around you. Look inside of you now. After this season of prayer and financial breakthrough, every area of your life will reflect the will of God. Am I talking, am I talking to someone? Every area of your life will... You, you will hate saying amen when you are praying. Not, not that the word amen is wrong because you have to stop praying. Have you ever prayed when, when you're about to say amen? You say, amen. When you open the door, about to go get up for, 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 for your closet, you just, feel, you just feel yourself praying the spirit again. And another hour again. And you say amen. When you're about to open the door, you go back again. I told you the story that I was busy ironing. Not that my wife doesn't iron me. Because the Mutkula pastor, she said on TV that he irons. Mopila mam road. No, no, no. I, I love doing that, actually. She knows it. I love doing that. Ironing is one of my things that I do. I used to love cooking, but she spoiled me. It's okay. All busy ironing. All Spirit said to me, pray now. I told you the story before. I knelt down. I prayed in tongues. I prayed in tongues. I thought maybe it would be, 40, it would be five minutes. It went on 15 minutes. 45 minutes. After an hour and 15 minutes, I'm receiving a call from my sister. Yo, we were supposed to go under the truck. What happened? My husband was driving. There was a baboon. When he swept to avoid the baboon, and there was a truck. I don't know what happened after that. All that I know is that our car was back on their lane and the truck has passed. But under normal circumstances, we were supposed to be crushed by the truck. I said, oh. I said, when did it happen? When I was praying. So, God is trusting you with a lot of lives that to save. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about uh, uh, evangelism. There are people who will live somewhere because you are praying. There was a time that I was praying for a family in Ukraine. I've never seen them. I just saw them in the spirit. They were driving between the pine trees. The road was in the pine trees. God said, pray for their protection. I prayed until they passed the stretch. I didn't see I was seeing them in the spirit. And after that, my prayer stopped for them. I will never meet them. I know if I meet them, to God be the glory. I know that God used me to protect them. Hallelujah. So God is trusting you. All these things, when you are free from all these oppressions because you identify them, why do you become a, a battle axe in the hand of God? Hallelujah. You become what? A battle axe in the what? In the hand of God. God will use you what, to destroy what needs to be destroyed. And we'll be able to pray prayers that what? Prevails. Let us lift up our hands. Let us, let, let us lift up our hands. Say, Heavenly Father, I heard you. You spoke to me. Tonight, I commit and surrender every 